Yeah, look, it's uh, you know, it's, I'm obviously very honoured and, and humbled to, to be named captain again this year, and I've um, certainly learned a lot over my first two years, and uh, no doubt will hold me in good stead from from here on in. As well as that, I know I've got a great support network behind me with the leadership group itself, the emerging leaders group, um, even the rest of the playing group and the coaching staff. I've got full confidence in the, the whole playing group and footy department we've got at the moment. That we've uh, we've certainly got what it takes to to keep improving. Over those past couple of years, what have you picked up perhaps that you may implement a little differently this year or is it sort of the same business as usual? I guess um, I've just been able to pick up skills along the way, particularly in times of adversity. Um, the first year was um, was obviously obviously the hardest, um, but also last year presents a challenge again for us this year to, to back up what we, pr we produced last year and um, certainly as a playing group we've, we're under no illusions it's just going to happen for us again this year. The, the hard work that we put in last pre-season and throughout last year um, will hold us in good stead. But we need to make sure that we um, still have a real ruthlessness about the way we play our footy and uh, the way that we want to be moving forward. It's not just about this season, it's about the years to come as well. Nathan, every club's got a different theme on a, a leadership model. Is there a reason why this one's better than just a captain vice captain system? I think what we're trying to develop here at the football club is a um, a system where we can develop as many leaders as we can within our club environment. So not only in the leadership group, we've got six this year, we've got uh, a number of players in the emerging leaders group as well, which provides them with opportunities and um, to you know, further develop their leadership group. They're given, obviously, uh, leadership skills, sorry. They're given um, plenty of opportunities to, to develop throughout the year with the help of Paddy Steinfurt, um, our welfare coordinator. And um, I guess we've seen guys outside of that group as well really strive to improve their leadership leadership skills that they're able to, to be put in a leadership position in the, in the years to come. So I guess the, it's a testament to Sam Jacobs and Jason Paul Pleasure to be included in the leadership group this year. And we've seen, um, obviously, in the last year and a um, couple of years gone by for Sauce and Jason, the way that they've been able to um, show the leadership amongst the playing group. Was it perhaps the biggest challenge for you guys to continue from last season, not fall back behind? Yeah, it, 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 it's always going to be, and I guess the uh, expectations with the playing group this year is um, what's going to be there internally for us regardless, but we've got that external expectation now too, which um, the playing group certainly um, going to have to deal with, and the way that we deal with that uh, in the best way, I believe, is the way that we attack our training, uh, we keep our beliefs strong within the playing group, and that um, we know that our best is certainly good enough, so we've got a firm belief in our game plan, uh, in the group that we've got, that um, our best is certainly good enough. And on that argument of the game plan, the argument is that you can never stand still because the game keeps changing. Where are you going to change this year? Oh look, we, uh, we're certainly aware that you have to make subtle adjustments each year. We won't be making wholesale changes to our game plan this year. We haven't done over the pre-season as yet, but um, we certainly had to, I guess, fine-tune a few areas um, to keep up with the game because, um, you know, as we know, we see a change um, year in, year out pretty quickly, and if you fall behind, then other teams can quickly go past you. So what do you think you need to get better at? I think there's a number of areas that we've touched on already since the season finished, but um, I know tackling's been one we've had a major emphasis on this year, and as well as that, really to keep on top of our, our contested possession, our strengths, um, as well as that, and our spread away from the contest. So I think it's more, more or less as well of um, working at our strength, but also um, identifying areas we can improve on, which was, um, I'd say, our tackling last year. So, so doing things better rather than doing things differently? Yeah, to an extent, yeah. There's been a fair bit of talk, Nathan, obviously from across the border about the, the drugs issue and everything. Has it made you uh, question or at least, you know, sort of say, OK, we, are we completely across everything that's being put into our bodies? Oh, look, I've got every faith. I know the playing group do and our medical staff. Um, we haven't got any questions about um, any supplements or medications that we would like to take or we put on. We've, uh, we've certainly got every confidence to go to our medical team and ask them and uh, full faith in them that they, they give us a, the right answer that, um, you know, hold us in good stead. The Australian Crime Commission is launching a 12-month investigation saying there's widespread use of illegal substances in sport right across the board and involvement in organised crime. Does that surprise you and shock you? To be honest, it does. Um, I've had no um, contact or awareness of that happening, particularly here at our football club or even um, abroad, to be honest. So I guess that is really surprising for me. It'd be interesting to see what, what comes of that investigation. How do you get briefed so you know that what you're doing is actually legal? Oh, we have we have seminars each year around drugs from Asada and um, the AFL Players Association are continually educating us on on what that looks like for us. As well as that, the club doctor speaks to us once, twice a year about supplements, about any questions that we may have in regards to uh, medical treatments in, in that regard. And if we've got 
any queries whatsoever, we've got full confidence to go to them and ask them the question and, and back in their expertise, because that's the area to, to give us an informed decision and a correct decision. Do, do you remember the game in Brisbane last year? You tried a new supplement just before that game, didn't you? And that didn't quite work for you guys? Not that I can remember. Ice vests, maybe? No, I can't, didn't I actually can't it wasn't remember now. Was a supplement tried just in that game? No, that I, mean, no I can't. I can't, I can't remember taking. No, I can't remember that. How do you deal with uh, figures? You get to be approached by a lot of people in the public sometimes. Shady cats. What, what do you do, <laughs> like yourself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wearing pink shirts. What, what do you do in those situations? Oh, I guess. As an AFL player, we're, we're that well educated on what you can and can't do as a role model, as an elite sports person. You've just got to have the knowledge to know that um, you know, if someone approaches you and, and offers you something that is clearly illegal or you're not sure of, you've got to ask questions to your medical staff. And I guess if you, if you know it's illegal, then you know you're, you're pushing the boundaries and you've got to face consequences if you are caught. So, um, But certainly that's not happening here at our football club. What about the player who might be on the edge and thinks he needs to do something extra and is doing things on his own? What's the counselling there? I guess um, first of all, you've got to pick that up if you're aware of, of that happening. But my advice to you know to any young player or any player that's thinking along those lines, it's simply not worth it. We're seeing what's um, already what's happened with an investigation to date, and um, yeah. yeah. Rapid rush for you, Source, after just one year. Yeah, it is. It's uh, obviously very exciting, and um, you know, very very proud to get the acknowledgement from the coaches and also the other senior leaders, and, and to be a part of the, the leadership group. And yeah, it's good. Do you, do you like leadership groups rather than just a captain, vice captain system? Yeah, I do. I think we've got a great setup here as well. Um, you know, the six leaders that we got in the, the leadership group are supported very well by the emerging leaders, and um, I think uh, you know when you get more more leaders, it, it helps game day because you know we've got 12, 13 blokes who can stand up um, when it matters on the field. How, how do you stop it being six voices rather than just one theme? Um, I guess you know. The, well, obviously, we haven't had any meetings yet, but um, having the ability to challenge each other and. You know, we're all working towards the same thing and we're all on the same page, but you know, we're all different types and we all, all bring something um, different as well. What, what makes Nathan able to then keep it all together so that it doesn't become six splintered pieces? Um, oh, VB's great. We obviously, he's got a great rapport with, with not only six blokes, but also the emerging leaders and everyone in the team. So, um, you know, he runs things pretty well, VB. And, I guess the way he, he uh, his, his best part of his leadership is, is the way he um, conducts himself and, and carries himself. Um, well, Jason, congratulations. First time in the leadership group. It's obviously a big achievement for your career. Yeah, um, tremendous honour, I think, firstly, and um, you know, to be recognised by your peers and by the coaching staff in that way and um, something that I highly regard, yeah. Have you always had leadership aspirations or has it only been quite recent? Um, I don't really know if I've um, sort of pursued the leadership title as such. I think you know, it's an important trait and important quality to be a leader around the football club um, in the way that you carry yourself, but not necessarily to have the title. But um, you know, in saying that, I certainly um, am humbled by the, by the you know, appointment to the leadership group and um, you know, something that I can continue to work on, develop my leadership um, throughout the year. You sort of pinch yourself a bit, Jason. I mean, you, you were rookie listed at the start of your career. The listed, then you came back. You've come a long way. Yeah, um, I suppose I didn't have the, the, you know, the, the easiest path into um, AFL footy, and had to work hard, and um, that's fine. I, you know, don't mind working hard, and um, I guess that's something that I can share to the guys coming through now. Um, um, you know how important it is to make sure that you're uh, working hard to achieve what you want. Jason, what do you want to contribute in that role? A leadership group. Yeah. Um, I want to challenge the the coaches and the current leadership group on where we're headed, and um, you know, throw up some ideas that I have, and, um, and make sure that, as I said, I continue to develop my leadership and and, and keep giving back to the group.